everybody. This is Jen from Garner Jen's Journey. Welcome to my living room. <laughs> well, I, instead of doing a garden video today, I figured I would do a health journey video today. Since my journey encompasses the garden and my health. So today we're going to be discussing my health, where I am, and where I plan on going. Now as you may or may not know, um, depending on how far you've been following me on my journey, I have been struggling with uh, lots of health issues, one of them including being overweight. I have been overweight since um, high school. Um, back then I wasn't too far overweight, just mildly overweight. I fit into a size 16, 18 at that time. But my parents kind of said it's because I'm big boned. Um, I come from farmer stock. So uh, farmer children <laughs> are generally big boned and more muscular and uh, they're just built that way because we live a farming lifestyle and you kind of need uh, that kind of build to do some of the work that farm people do. So my overweightness was passed off as just being big boned. Well, that continued on, um, and then I got pregnant with our first child, and I was around 160 to 170 pounds at that time. Uh, still a little overweight, but not alarmingly so yet. Um, but then I gained all the weight from being pregnant with her. Um, I ended up being like at 190 pounds, something like that. And um, I never lost it. Um, and then got pregnant with uh, our son and gained more weight. And I think by the time I had him, I was sitting at about 210, something like that. It was 20 some years ago, so. <laughs> But anyway, so I was uh, at at least 200, 210 pounds. Um, I was starting to get to the point of being quite overweight. For my build and my size, I shouldn't be any more than 155 to 160. So anyways, I was sitting at uh, over 200 pounds at that time. As life continued on, and I went through a lot of different stressful times in my life, a couple different surgeries, a messy divorce, a lot of trauma, um, depression, and all that stuff. Um, I really put on a lot of weight. And my highest weight uh, that I remember looking at the scale was around 305 pounds. And I was up to a size 26, 28. So 305 pounds was the highest weight that I remember seeing on my scale. And it was at that time, you know, when I hit the over 300 mark, that I was like, oh boy, I really need to make some changes. I've got to get this under control. My mother deals with obesity. It's because she has a thyroid problem. And she's also had problems with her weight. Um, I guess on the female side of my family, there was a little problem with weight. Not a lot, but a little. And my mother really struggled with it throughout her adult life. Um, I remember her being quite heavy when um, my uh, the oldest of my two younger brothers was born. She was really, really heavy. And then um, she lost all that weight um, over the years. And when I moved out, she was a very nice size, uh, appropriate size. Um, and then uh, she started putting it on later um, as menopause and then stress and stuff uh, happened. So she's heavy again. Um, so that runs in the family there. And then um, my grandfather, her dad, had a heart attack and a quadruple bypass surgery in 92. Um, her mother um, had uh, colon cancer and that was she ended up passing away from complications in 2001 so I've got some serious health concerns on my mother's side of the family that I really have to watch out for 
Um, I'm not too sure about my biological father's side uh, because he left when I was not even a toddler yet. So um, I think cancer runs on that side of the family, but other than that, don't know. So I've got some ser serious health problems going on in, in my family. And being overweight is making me high risk for having those problems as well, for either having heart problems like my grandfather or, um, you know, being high risk for cancer, whether it's colon, breast, or, or whatever. So I know that I have to get my weight under control. And I'm in my 40s now, and it don't get any easier as you get older. It gets a lot harder. <clears throat> One of the things I was struggling with, though, is um, I chose to go vegetarian um, about 2010, 2011. Um, I went vegetarian, um, quite close to being vegan. I still ate uh, some dairy and some egg products, um, but mostly, mostly a uh, vegetarian. In, um, in about a year and a half of changing to that lifestyle, I lost 45 pounds. So I was on the right track. I was, I was getting my health better and I was losing the weight. Um, I was walking, I was exercising. I tried going to the gym uh, as much as I could. And then um, my, my health actually started deteriorating and sidelining my exercise ability. Um, I started having problems with uh, fibromyalgia. Uh, makes me hurt quite a bit. Makes me really tired. Um, I ha also have uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. And that and fibromyalgia are, are quite similar in symptoms. Um, but they're also separate at the same time. So I deal with both of those. <clears throat> I also have um, what's called vestibular migraines, which means instead of me getting headaches, like a lot of people associate with migraines, I get dizzy spells, really, really bad dizzy spells. Um, sometimes it's not too bad, it's just uh, like if I was walking on a ship that's getting tossed at sea, um, I really have to be careful and watch my footing. Other times, it's like I'm on the tilt-a-whirl at the fair and I can't get off. Um, so I have to lay down and depending on how severe the attack is, it can last anywhere from 12 to 48 hours. Um, so that sidelines my exercise as well. Um, so exercising has really, really been a struggle for me. Um, so I've been paying more attention to my diet, what I eat or what I don't eat. And I'm very careful on trying not to eat junk food. I try to eat whole food, plant-based diet. Um, I don't eat a lot of processed food. Once in a while, I'll binge on some chocolate uh, candy bars or something like that. But it's not an everyday thing. I'm generally eating pretty healthy. So um, I've remained at around 270 now for about a year, um, year and a half, I think, of, of what, what it's been. Um, and so trying to figure out why I'm not losing weight, even though I'm generally eating pretty healthy. So I decided to start tracking exactly what I ate. A lot of people uh, say that overweight people are overweight because they eat a whole bunch of food that that's just how it is. You're overweight because you're putting way too much down your throat. So I wanted to see exactly how much I was eating um, and you know f in the fat and the calories and in the carbohydrates all the extra sugars and things like that which I didn't think I generally ate anyway. So I started using a calorie and nutrient tracking app on my tablet. For my size, um, I'm supposed to be eating around 2,000 calories a day to maintain my weight. That's, that's how many calories I need with my lifestyle to just function, so to speak, to maintain my weight where I'm at, status quo. If I wanted to lose weight, um, the recommended daily allowance is around 1,750 to 1,800 calories a day. So that's what I'm supposed to be eating. 
So I started tracking exactly what I was eating, whether it was the candy bar binge or I went out to eat and ate at a buffet, um, everything that I ate. Um, sometimes I would have a splurge on um, maybe a coffee, a flavored coffee. And you know those can run 300, 400 calories, easy, a pop. So uh, I made sure I tracked everything. And what I came to find was quite shocking. Again, I'm supposed to be eating anywhere from 1,750 calories a day to 2,000 calories a day to maintain status quo. The average over a 28-day period, the average daily calories I was consuming was between 900 and 1,000 calories. You heard that right between 900 and 1,000 calories daily. That's a lot less than what I'm supposed to be eating just to function. So my body was literally starving. And it is a scientific uh, fact, it can be verified, that when your body is in starvation mode, if you're eating less calories than you need to maintain status quo, your body is going to hold on to every single calorie it can because it's starving. And so you're not going to lose weight by eating less. You're actually going to possibly gain more weight because any additional fat, any additional sugar is not going to get burned off. It's going to be held on by your body trying to survive. So that was very shocking that to find out that I was indeed starving myself. And I, it wasn't that I was meaning to. I was not trying to be anorexic. You know, I wasn't purposely trying not to eat. It's just that's how my lifestyle was. And as far as fat calories and things um, that what I, was, I was consuming... A third of the, those calories, of, of the 900 to 1,000 calories, was from fat. So, a third. And then the rest was carbohydrates and, uh, oh, what's the other thing? Fiber and protein and things like that. And carbohydrates, I'm not talking about the simple sugars and things like that. I generally don't eat sugar. Um, Carbohydrates will be from the pastas or from the potato. Um, if I had something sweetened, it would be sweetened with a, either honey or a real maple syrup, things like that. It wasn't a simple sugar. Um, so that's what was going on there. So after compiling all that information, I went to a friend of mine from church who, she's overweight too. And she's really working on getting her health and her weight under control. And I told her the situation. I said, I really need help to put together meals that are balanced. Meals that are going to have the proper amount of calories, of uh, fat, uh, uh, good fats, uh, protein, uh, carbohydrates, the good kind, that I need help with a well-balanced diet. Um, my husband and son and I, we have different dietary ideas on what we should eat. Uh, like I said, I am vegetarian, borderline vegan, but my guys, they're vegetarian, borderline omnivores. They prefer their meats instead of uh, vegetarian options and things like that. So it's very difficult for me to try to eat the way I feel I need to eat and yet try to make food that they will actually eat. So a lot of times I get frustrated and I just make them what it is that they will actually eat so I'm not wasting food. And then I don't eat because I don't want to eat that food. So after going with my friend and talking to her about what's going on, she helped me by putting together a balanced meal menu for a week 
so I could try to get an idea of what I should actually be eating for myself. Um, so my guys are up north this week. They're up volunteering um, at our church camp doing some cleanup and things. So this is the perfect time for me to try to put a menu into practice and see how I feel after a week of eating this way, eating with a new menu style that um, my friend helped put together. So last night and then the, today I went shopping and got some things that I needed to uh, put together the food items on my menu. So I'm going to take you over to my kitchen and I'm going to show you some of those items that I got and then if I have time I might actually take you through a recipe that I was given for one of the items that I'm supposed to be eating this week. So let's head on over to my kitchen. Okay, so here's some of the items that I had purchased between last night and today. Um, I got quite a few different items here that are part of the meal plan. And some of the things, uh, they're going to last more than just this week. So, um, uh, yeah, it's going to be a really interesting venture. Um, with everything that I purchased here, including some other odds and ends, I spent about $100 total so um, so I got um, some oranges uh, this will be part of my breakfast and I'll also use them to make a uh, fruit salad to go with my lunches um, I've also got apples uh, same thing breakfast and lunches and uh, the evening uh, snack is a whole grain bread and whole grain pita pockets um, for the different sandwiches I'll be doing and then, so I'm not overdoing it on gluten products, I have brown rice pasta. I also have quite a few fresh vegetables. I've got the celery and uh, some grape tomatoes here. They were on sale, awesome. As was the broccoli and the cucumbers, they were on sale. Sweet potatoes, I'm going to be doing both baked sweet potatoes and sweet potato fries. These are very, very good. Um, the sugars in here and things are very good for you. They're not uh, bad sugars or anything. And this actually has way more potassium. I think three times as much potassium than one of those. So if you're looking for potassium, eat a sweet potato. And then I've got some bouillon. This is a vegetable-based bouillon. So um, I can make some lentil soup and some other soups with vegetable stock. I really love this brand, so that works. Um, I have tofu here. Um, like I said, I do uh, non-dairy when I can. Um, so I do have tofu uh, to do egg salad and scrambled eggs instead of using um, actual eggs themselves. So we're going to be uh, working with this later on to do the tofu egg salad so I can make that today and have it sit overnight, get nice and um, mingled with all the flavors and then that will be for tomorrow's lunch. And then I also have uh, applesauce with the apples. My friend told me that a good thing to do is have toast with your applesauce and your peanut butter on it and I thought that was really weird um, but she said actually it's really good and it's really healthy for you it kind of balances itself out so I'm going to be trying something new tomorrow and then these jars over here um, I just did uh, three Hubbard squash I did another one today so these are a canned uh, squash from my Hubbard squash so I'll also be using some of these throughout the week too as a vegetable to go with the rest of my meals so there's some other things that I don't have on this table that's going to go with um, my different meals and stuff like that but this here is basically what I'm going to be eating all week okay so one of the things that's really going to help me this week it's something I've tried implementing before, but uh, with my family's different uh, dietary lifestyles, um, it's been uh, really difficult to keep um, in practice. But again, since I'm home by myself all week this week, 
I figured I'll give it a go again and uh, see how much it helps me. And that idea is doing meal prep, meaning that uh, on a day like today, Sunday, the beginning of the week, I'm going to uh, use these containers and cut up my fruits and vegetables and get um, as much of the meal prep work done as possible today. That way, uh, throughout the rest of the week, I can kind of just like grab and go. Um, I already have things prepared in my containers. I can just take the containers and dump and cook and all those kinds of things. And it really cuts down on time during the rest of the week. And uh, so it's not so much a deterrent of trying to get a meal prepared when you're really busy or maybe you're not feeling good. Um, but to already have it ready to go, you just need to throw it in the pot and cook it or whatever. So um, I got a couple of different uh, meal prep containers um, that I really, really like. And I'll put the links in the description box below. I got these off of Amazon. Uh, the first one, uh, this is by Full Star. And it has uh, these nice uh, airtight um, containers. Um, they're, they don't leak or anything. They're really nice. Very uh, sturdy. They're microwavable, freezer uh, safe. You can put them in the dishwasher. Um, very good. They stack really nice. Um, and a lot of them are actually sandwich together. Um, I don't have them that way right now, but uh, they actually sandwich together and um, save you space in your storage area. And it's going to make me a liar today. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, see if I can put that in there. And that might not be the right one for this one. But um, it stacks pretty well in the, in the pantry. So I really like the Full Star one. And then another one that's a little bit simpler, but same idea is uh, uh, this is by Prep Naturals. Again, I got it from Amazon. And these are the very simple food prep containers. There is nothing really fancy about these guys at all. These kind of remind me of deli containers. So you have your, your container and your lid, just like a deli style container. But these are very sturdy as well. They're very flexible. Um, dishwasher safe, freezer safe, microwavable safe, and they stack very well as well. So you could get quite a few containers of these done and have them stacked in your refrigerator, ready to go when you're ready to cook. So, and I will put the link to both of these below. But uh, having your meal prep work done ahead of time is a real lifesaver and a diet saver as well. Now I'm starting on the prep work for my uh, eggless egg salad sandwich bread, which is made with tofu. And uh, so one of the things I'm doing is prepping my celery. And don't yell at me, I do not have mad knife skills. <laughs> don't cringe either. If you don't like my knife skills, don't look. Um, I just don't have the motor coordination to do it the way chefs do. <clears throat> but I do it the way that works for me. And so far, in my 20 some years of cooking, I have not cut myself. So. <clears throat> but, anyways, uh, just chopping up the celery. And then um, I will chop up some onion. Either some onion or some shallot, I'm not sure. Might do some shallots, just because shallots have a little bit milder of a, a flavor, I think. But um, I have my tofu in the sink. It's getting the extra water pressed out. So it works uh, really well once it crumbles. I have my turmeric. Um, I have some ranch seasoning. Um, this is from Vegetarian Express. That's a really nice ranch seasoning, um, and you can mix it with uh, any uh, non-dairy um, product if you like, non-dairy mayonnaise, non-dairy sour cream, uh, or cream cheese. Um, you can do this with, with any non-dairy as well as uh, dairy item, and it makes a wonderful ranch-flavored uh, condiment. So we're going to use that, and then uh, 
Also, I have some pink Himalayan salt that I'm going to use as well. And then I also have my nutritional yeast flakes, if I can get it out. Um, the nutritional yeast flakes that I use uh, for, it gives it kind of a little bit of a cheesy flavor, but that's not really what I'm going for. I'm uh, The vitamin B12 that's in these, um, it's an essential nutrient, especially for vegetarians and vegans. Uh, so that I'm going to put a little bit of that in as well. So I'm going to continue chopping up my celery and get the other things going. And then I'll bring you back and we're going to put it all together. Okay, so one of the last things that I prepped was some fresh parsley for my garden. I got nice and chopped up here and we are ready to go. So I'm going to move this out of the way because we don't need that one. Alright, so I'm just going to take my parsley and put it in there. This is uh, probably about two or three tablespoons worth of fresh chopped parsley. One of the things I was not getting enough of was greens, fresh greens. And as many as you know, uh, greens have a lot of nutrients in them. Um, some greens are very high in iron and manganese and magnesium. Those are two different nutrients, manganese and magnesium. Also calcium, um, this, and iron, I don't know if I said iron, but uh, fresh dark greens are very important. Um, so I made sure to add some nice uh, fresh parsley to that, so that'll help there. And then I have uh, some minced shallot, and this is one shallot. I'm only going to use about half, because I'm not real big on the raw onion thing. Um, and I'll use the rest to cook uh, breakfast tomorrow. Um, but as you can see, I've already got it ready to go. So um, breakfast tomorrow is going to be uh, a vegetarian uh, breakfast fajita kind of stuff. So that's going to be really nice. So I put the shallots in there. And then I got about uh, three quarters of a cup of finely minced celery. I took that celery that you just saw me preparing and I finely chopped it up. So that's going to go in there. Not a lot of people who uh, use sell, uh, sandwich spreads like big chunks of vegetables. So it's nice if you finally chop it so it's all nice and uniform. So we got that going on. I'm just going to mix that up a little bit. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to take my tofu. This is uh, extra firm tofu. And I'm just going to take it and I'm going to crumble it to kind of get like the uh, egg texture, the, the chopped up hard boiled egg texture. Alright, so that's pretty good. Again, we're making sure we don't have any big chunks of tofu either. Um, tofu by itself can be quite bland and nasty to bite into. So you want to make sure that you have it small enough where all the seasonings are going to mix with the tofu and make it really taste like a egg salad sandwich spread. All right, so that's pretty good. Now we're going to add our seasonings. My friend is not a cook that measures out things. She goes by eye and by taste. So she gave me a general idea of how to make this uh, in a way that she says tastes really good. So that's how I'm going to share this with you. And uh, you know, if you're one of those who needs an exact measurement, this recipe is probably not for you. So we're going to take the turmeric. Turmeric is very good um, for an anti-inflammatory, uh, but its yellow color also helps make this more look more like an egg salad sandwich. And uh, so her idea was that you just take it and you're going to coat the tofu like so. See how it's nice and evenly coated with the turmeric. She says that's how she measures that. Same with the Vegetarian Express. I'm going to take that. We're just going to lightly put a nice little coat over it like that. The salt, I'm going to do about a pinch of salt to start. So I'll just take that over there. And then the same with the nutritional yeast flakes as we're just going to co cover the top with a layer of it. 
Make sure it's good and covered. There we go. So everything but the salt, we just evenly coated the tofu with. And now we're going to take that and we're going to mix it up. Wow. You notice I haven't added my wet ingredients yet. That's because you want to make sure that the seasonings stick to the tofu. And if you put the wet ingredients in before you mix this up, uh, the seasonings won't adhere to the tofu. They'll kind of just be in the sauce. And so your tofu is going to taste like tofu. All right. So that's nice and mixed and uniform. Looks pretty good already. Now we're going to take our mayonnaise and start adding it in a little at a time. Now I am using Miracle Whip um, because that is what my guys here like. Like I said, we really struggle with our diet uh, needs. They clash a lot. So um, I am using uh, regular Miracle Whip. So I'm just going to add basically a half a cup at a time and mix this in until the mixture holds together and looks like an egg salad sandwich. Whoops, I'm making a mess. Needs just a little bit more, not much. You're going to hear my cat in the background. She's going crazy. That's normal for her. Nothing's wrong with her. It's just the way that she is. Alright, that looks really good. Alright. So there we go. There is our eggless egg salad sandwich spread. I'm going to put this in another container that has a resealable lid and pop this in the refrigerator and let this sit overnight. And then I will have it for lunch uh, with my whole grain pita pockets. So I hope you enjoyed this little different type of video today and uh, learning a recipe that I'm going to be utilizing this week as I try to get my nutrition back on track. I'll try to upload some more videos this week as I have time. Um, maybe get some more of the recipes that I'm working on this week out to you guys. So if you want, you can try them too. So I thank you so much for watching everybody and following me on my journey. I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.